All right, hello everyone. We're going to get started. Uh, thank you all for joining us for our Forefront series. Um, today we are featuring Sherman Park and the businesses are MKE Black, which is founded by Rick and Paul. And we also have Jet Constellations founded by Nadia. Um, Forefront is one of our series on our Cloud Cafe. We do events every week around all different kinds of topics. So you can continue to connect uh, with your friends and your, uh, the businesses that you love across the city. We have a couple sponsors to thank. Uh, we have Ginger Lazovic from Shore West, Re Shore West Realty, as well as North Shore Bank. So thank you so much to the sponsors that kept our programming alive throughout these times. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to our host, Alexa from Meet on the Street. Hi guys, I'm Alexa Alfaro with Meet on the Street. Uh, my co-host Jeremy is on daddy duty today. So I am going to hold it down for us. And today we have um, some businesses from the Sherman Park neighborhood that we're excited to talk about. So I am gonna start with you, Rick and Paul, if you each wanna introduce yourself and like give us a little bit about um, the business you started, MKE Black. I'll go first. Uh, so my name is Rick Banks. I am a uh, founder and board chair of MKE Black. Uh, my full-time job is as political director for Black, Black Leaders Organizing for Communities. And uh, so Paul and I started MKE Black probably going on a year now uh, when we first had the conversations about um, kind of creating a, a database of Black-owned businesses, kind of thinking about why wasn't there a central location for people to learn about um, how to support the Black community and cultures and events and things like that. Um, and so we learned that there had been previous uh, resources and websites and things like that, um, but they had kind of fallen out. And so we sought to fill that gap um, and kind of came together to, to create uh, MKE Black. And so uh, we originally started out kind of seeking a you know professional big developer to uh, come in and develop this app, and we got kind of quoted at you know large prices in the tens of thousands of dollars. Um, so we're like, okay, we'll have to figure out we can raise this money to figure this out. Um, but ultimately, Paul was able to find a platform um, that he was able to really easily able to utilize to to build uh, what became our app, MKE Black, which is our, our mobile. Uh, black business database that's currently on uh, Android, hopefully soon be on Apple. Uh, and we've also kind of transitioned all of that data to the website as well. Um, so in addition to that, that kind of being our main kind of platform, in addition to promoting black culture and events on our, our social media and Facebook, uh, we're also excited to partner with Nadia um, and Jet Constellations or the Milky Way Tech Hub um, to kind of promote black people in tech um, and do other events and uh, supporting of the community, like uh, raising money for businesses impacted by COVID, um, doing things to support, you know, the protests and things like that. So we're branching out, we're still trying, still new, figuring out kind of who we are, uh, what we're doing, but it's been really good. It's been successful. So, Paul? I can't really top that, but I'll try my best. Um, my name is Paul Benson. <laughs> I am the co-founder and executive director of MK Black. Uh, so yeah, I started the last August, uh, one day I was in the shower and I was like, why is there not a database of black businesses in Milwaukee? So I approached Rick, which I've, I've known him since middle school because he's well connected in the community. And then here we are, fast forward, we have an app, we have a website. Uh, we have also, uh, as Rick mentioned, helped raise funds for black businesses affected by COVID-19 as well as the unrest that have happened recently. So we've donated today to date uh, over four grand and actually that number will rise actually very shortly. Uh, we're also right now helping support black businesses by uh, purchasing snacks and goods to distribute to processors. So it's a way to help support and give uh, visibility to black businesses as well as help support processors in the streets. Nadia. Yeah, hi everyone, Nadia Johnson here, founder of Jet Constellations and the Milky Way Tech Hub. I started Jet Constellations roughly around um, late 2017, but really didn't become active until May of 2018. Um, and the reason why I decided to launch Jet Constellations is because around 2017, I was hearing there was a lot of buzz that Milwaukee was transforming into this tech hub. And I look around the room and it was just, you know, very suit and tie and white guy, as I like to say. And so um, I had had enough because at that point in my STEM 
career journey, I'd seen enough lack of representation in the classrooms, mentorship, corporate America, research, academia, and now in the startup space, I was like, enough. So I founded Jack Constellations um, initially as a con consultant firm um, to help black and brown individuals, underrepresented people, or what I like to call the most needed people in technology to um, make some uh, traction in the startup space here in Milwaukee. And so now we have our social impact arm, the Milky Way Tech Hub, which functions to create this narrative that Milwaukee is not only a tech hub, but the most diverse and inclusive tech hub in the nation where black people, uh, people of color, um, people of underrepresented backgrounds can thrive in technology. And so we focus now on STEM education, entrepreneurship, and building a diverse community of techies. That is amazing. And I love that you guys have been able to collab and partner um, already so young in both of the businesses. Um, so let's talk about like kind of reflection. We're in very uncharted territory right now between the pandemic, between the human rights movement. Um, can you tell us what you guys are going through um, personally? How are you dealing with this? There's a lot to take on each day, but also how is this impacting business? Has it been something that's been able to push your business forward? Is it kind of making you pause and pivot differently? I'll go ahead. So for me, it's been uh, been bad. There's been some tough days. There's been some good days, but I'm just kind of taking it day by day. Um, it's just hard to hear about all the brutality happening right now and all of the just all the protests, all of the, 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 the racial um, retaliation that's happening today. So it's kind of difficult. I did take a day off from work last week because there's just a lot on my mind. Uh, between just working, all the current events, and just having family, it's, it's a lot sometimes. But I mean, as far as our business, uh, we have a lot of events that were planned for March, April, May, and June, but those were obviously canceled. But the support from Milwaukee has been very overwhelming. I mean, we received just uh, a lot of kudos for having the platform out there to support black businesses. Uh, actually, all of the various uh, ways to, uh, for people to help support the black community, and one of those ways is to shop black, essentially. So it's really good for us. Um, donations also have been really good for us as well, so we're able to use the funds we receive to give back to the community. And for me, you know, personally, it has also been very rough. Um, you know, again, as uh, Paul said, I've just been taking it day by day. Um, so much information coming at um, me, it seems, and um, it's just been a lot to process, especially given that, you know, um, my company has built this platform that uplifts black people. A lot of people are now in the inbox. How can we help in, um, you know, asking questions. I, I get a lot of calls with support, but I also have gotten a lot of calls asking um, inconsiderate questions like why are black people looting and why are black people, um, you know, hurting their own communities and things of that nature. So it, it can be really taxing um, and overwhelming dealing with all of that. So I do try to take it day by day and uh, manage the best as I can. Um, and now, as for my business, um, you know, I, I did think, you know, there would be a little bit of a lull um, given the pan both pandemics, um, COVID-19 and racism here in this country, just dealing with the both of them at the same time. However, we've been able to um, um, sort of uh, reflect um, as a company on, you know, what our true mission is, which is to um, uplift and support the Black community. Um, at the end of the day, that's, you know, what we're here for. And, um, you know, really tuning into that mission has helped us to sort of um, provide a little bit of a roadmap for us. So we've decided to sort of pivot some of our operations into assisting um, in the Black community or, um, you know, people who are currently impacted by both of these pandemics. And, um, and so we've had, you know, different initiatives from you know, rolling out grant opportunities, having office hours, all of which has actually helped business because you know, folks who have come to our free office hours have now you know, turned into clients. So, um, so far we've been able to stay afloat, great, thankfully. Wonderful. Rick, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just uh, for myself, I, I've been kind of describing it as like a, a fight or flight mode. Um, like there's times when I'm, I wanna, you know, definitely be all out and give it my all to really try to make some things change. And then there's times when um, New Zealand just looks like a great place to live. So, and, you know, just kind of like, day by day, like they said. And uh, I think Paul hit the effects on, you know, MK Black and stuff. 
We've just been grateful to have been able to, you know, be helpful. That's amazing. Yeah, right now with all the adversity you guys are facing, you are talking about how you're taking advantage of it, turning it into giving back to your community. And can you talk about how your business is tying into the Sherman Park neighborhood? And then kind of what you're doing in the midst of these times to give back? I, I can speak to that. So uh, my company, Jack Constellations, we are um, located at 3803. On, on Fond du Lac and it's just a couple of blocks down from the Sherman Phoenix and uh, one of the things that sort of was birthed out of um, uh, COVID-19 um, mm -hmm. was our partnership with uh, American Family and Sherman Phoenix and Connect Business Consulting. Uh, we were able to um, come together, partner, and roll out um, STEM curriculum for students, keeping them engaged during this time while they're no longer able to go in the classroom. And we were also roll out and um, deploy over 100 laptops um, to these students as well right in the Sherman Park area and so it um, was an incredible effort and I'm so grateful that I was able to collaborate with people in the Sherman Park area also with American Family um, to make that happen. That's amazing. So MK Black is not specifically located in the neighborhood but it has helped Sherman Park as well. Um, we've been in protests in the neighborhood. We've actually helped uh, supply funding to businesses within Sherman Phoenix. So we are out and about in the neighborhood, even though we're not located there specifically at this time. That's amazing. So there were both gaps in the market for both of these businesses, which is why they were started. Was there a moment in time where it was kind of this like, ah, like you had this like, okay, this is the idea, we're going to move forward with it and execute it? For me, that was just being in the shower, honestly. <laughs> It just came to mind, like, this does not exist. I mean, there are some uh, uh, organizations that do have a listing started, but it's not very user-friendly or it's not very extensive. So our goal was, was to provide that missing link uh, mm -hmm. from leaking uh, citizens of Milwaukee and Milwaukee area to Black businesses. Because right now, when you look at uh, places to visit, like this Milwaukee or other places, it's not, it, they don't really have many uh, places outside of downtown or the Bayview area or the east side. And our goal really was to kind of treat the north side or other areas like what you see on those websites, the travel sites. Because mm -hmm. they yes. are important too. They are a part of Milwaukee. Yes, they are. A hundred percent. Yes. And for me, I was thinking about it um, from an economic development lens. So uh, I first thought about it when I was in college, from like my junior year, senior, junior or senior year in college studying economics and political science. And so I'm always trying to re relate these things that I'm learning back to the black community and how can we um, improve the community. And so I just started thinking about, you know, follow the money and part of the reasons why, you know, we have the conditions that we have is because of a, a lack of investment, uh, lack of access to capital for black businesses and just general lack of support. Um, from, you know, the general community overall. And so I was thinking like, how could we, like, why isn't there, similar to Paul, why isn't there some one location that there should be a black businesses in Milwaukee? And so I actually ran into the folks, or not ran, uh, I brought this idea up in conversation with uh, my elementary school principal and she was like, oh my God, my husband and my daughter are working on this idea right now. Um, and so that kind of turned into one of the website that we kind of referred to earlier. Um, but unfortunately, at some point, they kind of shut that project down and then Paul called me up one day and I was like, oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Amazing. Media? Yeah, for me, I think it, I just reached my boiling point. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what just sparked me to say, like, I have to do this. I have to start a company that addresses um, the disparities in the tech industry. Technology is threaded throughout every industry. Um, it is now and it is the future. And um, there needs to be more representation in, in this field, period. And I was not seeing enough leadership acknowledging that, acknowledging the gaps and acknowledging that the gap needed to be filled. And so it prompted me to launch my own company and, and now create this ecosystem of sorts that um, is very much focused on um, promoting diversity and inclusion in um, the tech space. That's amazing. So all of you guys, you guys are talking about like the highs and kind of like what gets you through like, you know, what are the positives and being able to give back to the community and seeing representation um, is so important. 
what are the lows and then how how do you get through those what is like your process or what drives you because we we all go through this like you know crazy roller coaster and it's fun to be up here but this whole like sliding downward and hitting that low is very hard um and if you aren't an entrepreneur i would like you guys to kind of explain your process of what those lows look like and then how do you process through them to keep going for me i would say uh, one of the uh, um, more notable lows uh, was when I participated in a local pitch event. Um, I had uh, put a team together, came up with the idea, um, was ready to go, and the director of this pitch um, pulled me aside and did his very best to get convince me to bow out of the competition and, you know, question my motives, questioned uh, whether or not I was ready, my team was ready. Um, question if I had the capacity and I asked other folks and then no one else was um, challenged in this way and and while it, it was a it was a low point because I was so disgusted that I had to push myself to um, continue um, through this um, pitch competition knowing that there was already so many so much bias <laughs> in the mix um, uh, so it was it was really hard for me to, to get through that point because um, I started to think, is this how it's going to be being a black woman owning a tech company, having to convince people that I have the skill set? Note that I, you know, have a bachelor's in computer science, a master's in computational science. I'm currently pursuing my PhD right now. And it's like, what more do people want? Uh, so that was a low point because I was just trying to like figure out, is this really a, a good space for me? But um, at the same time, I think that while it's telling that, uh, I'll call it out as it is, racism is very much alive here in the city of Milwaukee, especially in the tech ecosystem, um, which we're working uh, very hard to combat um, and, uh, and deal with. But I think it's also in inspiring because it uh, is a reminder of why I started Tech Constellations and why I created the Milky Way Tech Hub. Um, th as, as Rick said, there's not enough, there are not enough Black people being invested in. Um, only 1% of, of um, venture capital investments goes to black people. Um, that's a significant problem. And a lot of it is because people have their biases, people are racist, people are not checking um, themselves and um, projecting and not giving people a chance to even get to the stage to pitch out their own ideas. So yeah, that's how I stay inspired. It's just a re reminding myself of the purpose behind what I do. Thank you for staying the course because it's important and it's needed in this community. Rick or Paul? For me, uh, some low points have been seeing some of the hate mail that we receive, whether it's racist or just unfavorable, because it's difficult sometimes to see that, to kind of experience that. Uh, that was really prevalent when we first launched um, our app uh, back in February to the public, and just seeing all of this hate mail saying that this is a racist and this is um, just, as, it's not right to do this. And for me, uh, how I persevered through that was really thinking about the greater good. This is a place not only for black people, but everyone in the Milwaukee area to shop and support these businesses here. Because if you uplift one part of the community, you uplift the entire community of Milwaukee and Milwaukee area. So that's how I kind of persevered mm -hmm. uh, through that. And that really this helped me to think about the greater good, the greater purpose of what the app is trying to accomplish. Yeah, for me, I, I'd say it's like, Getting the getting the notice that trying to build an app would cost twenty to twenty five thirty thousand um, dollars, and I guess it, it's more of a team per a perseverance than a, my, myself and as an individual because I guess the metaphor is like we got hit with this huge mountain and I'm ready to climb the mountain like all right let's go find this twenty thirty thousand dollars and Paul was like there's a tunnel right there and I was like so it's just maintaining situational awareness and just trying to you know find other options, I think, is a good method of persevering. That's awesome. Having a business partner to back your strengths and weaknesses is so critical um, to moving forward and running a successful business. Nadia, you talked about it in a little bit, and I would, was wondering if you could share with our audience, um, for you guys personally, like the youngest you remember experiencing racism about your age or where you were at middle school, and then your most recent time 
Um, you know, you can go into details if you want or if you just want to share your age. Is that question's directed to me? Uh, just all three of you, when, uh, yeah, whoever <laughs> wants to go first. First timer. Rick or Polly, do you want to answer? I can go first. I don't really remember the age that it first happened to me, but I remember one incident that was specific to me that really struck me. Uh, this happened um, back in 20, I forgot the exact year, 12 or so, 2011, 2012, and I was walking home, it was dark, uh, from the bus to my house, it's about two blocks away, and then I'm crossing the street, and all of a sudden this cop pulls up, and then they asked me where I come from, and so I was like, I came from the bus, and they put me in handcuffs in the back of the car because I fit the description. And for me, that really just really bothers me, really affected me. And just having to experience that, and luckily that happened to me, but seeing what other people go through, whether it's having a gun in their face or brutality happening to them, I understand it. How that was a very difficult experience to recover from and undergo at the same time. It's just, for me, that was really, really um, made me reflect on my life and like what it means to be Black, mm -hmm. essentially. Thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, it's hard for me to pinpoint in the earliest age. Um, I, I think, especially because I'm, I'm also like in my head dissecting racism versus prejudice. Because um, mm -hmm. I definitely remember some young, young, at some young ages like elementary, middle school, and high school, um, where I definitely remember experiencing like prejudice from folks. Like, like one particular incident that always sticks with me was like um, going. In the, into the lunchroom and I, you know, I sat at a table with mostly uh, Asian kids and I was told, why are you sitting here? This is the Asian table. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know. I mean, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and there was a second part to your question, uh, but I've also experienced, you know, situations like Paul, um, where I was on a bus stop with some friends and we've literally been waiting for this bus for what felt like an hour and most of the time there was a cop car just sitting right there kind of on the corner and then all of a sudden they get out of the car like hey you all fit the description of a, a robbery that just happened in the area and we're just like what like who's right there so yeah it happens uh most recent let me think about that one the did yeah, I, I can. Uh, so for me, I feel like the question is difficult because it's America, you know. So it's like asking when's the first time I saw a tree, you know, <laughs> like that, that happens all the time. So I think we should just acknowledge like that's it happens uh, far too often for me to like pinpoint like, oh, this is the first time it's happening. Um, but I, I can note one of the more significant um, times is uh, when I was, uh, I received my first internship and I was super excited about this. I'm like, yes, I'm doing it. I'm, you know, making it tech. And um, after, typically after, um, you know, your summer intern, you report out what you did to the CIOs, the VPs, et cetera. So I worked very hard for weeks on this presentation. I get up there and I kill it. I get back to my queue. People are knocking by my queue saying, hey, you did great. I'm like, thanks. And then my boss stops by and says, let me bring you to an enclave, which is a, a little room with no windows. So I should know something was up. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting there and uh, the person that comes out of her mouth is, we have to do something about your hair. You have to tame your hair. I remember her, her saying, you have to tame your hair. And I'm thinking to myself, like, all the things that you could say the first thing that she want to talk to me about is my hair. And the only thing, actually, she didn't say anything about my presentation. And so it was then that, you know, I was, I was so disgusted, again, <laughs> just so disgusted. I remember trying to hold back the tears, getting back to my um, cube and, and wondering, like, is this space even for me? Like, <laughs> what is this? I don't want to, like, subject myself to these people. And, um, uh, you know, I had to make a decision, like, do I persevere or do I... Um, bow out and uh, find a different field uh, of interest. And, and thankfully, I'm glad that I persevered because um, I'm to find out it was necessary for me to um, share my uh, vision with the world for more Black people to be in technology. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your stories. Um, the reason I asked you to is because I've never experienced racism. I know it's real. I know it's alive. I grew up with very progressive parents, but I feel like much like our community, if you've never experienced it, you have no idea. And like you said, media, 
like this is a marriage I experienced it all the time. This is like a common factor throughout my life. So I really just want people to hear and understand with your faces in our community that this is still going on and real change needs to continue to occur. So thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. Um, I'm gonna shift the conversation to talking about the Sherman Park neighborhood. So Nadia, you, have you been in the Sherman Park? Did you grow up in the Sherman Park neighborhood? I didn't grow up in the Sherman Park er area, but my mother has had a business there for the last 23 years. So okay. I traveled there back and forth in that neighborhood since I can remember. Can you talk a little bit how, like what the neighborhood is currently like, um, and then definitely give shout outs or recommendations for people to go visit if they've never been? Like what are some things they have to check out? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is the Sherman Phoenix. It's an incredible um, entrepreneurship or retail hub with amazing businesses. And so um, every time I, every time I visit there, I get the most positive energy. I like to have all of my meetings at the Sherman Phoenix, even though my, <laughs> my business is three blocks down. Um, it's just such a wonderful place um, with a, a beautiful community. Um, aside from the Sherman Phoenix, I, I know there um, the neighborhood has you know several churches that are very invested in the community. Um, the pasty shop is pretty popular um, eatery there, and um, I have to give a shout out to my mom who still has her own business, um, uh, Allstate Insurance Agency. Um, she's been there for 23 years, and I think that you know it's important to um, you know think about what's going on right now, but it's also important to think about you know. Um, the past, I, I've, I've had family members who have had businesses um, for 35 plus years in the Sherman Park area. And I think that, that that's telling that you can create a very solid business in that neighborhood. Yeah, so the in the 20s and 30s, it was said that the Sherman Park was um, home to like Milwaukee's like first business owner. So it's really cool to hear you talk about that because that totally ties into the history of the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Um, Rick and Paul, did either of you grow up in the Sherman Park neighborhood? And then if so, can you tell us a little bit about it or currently, um, besides the Sherman Phoenix, which I love, it's amazing. What other destinations or businesses do people need to check out if it's their first time in the area? Well, I did not grow up there in the area. However, besides Sherman Phoenix, uh, our app or website does have an area just for Sherman Phoenix, or sorry, Sherman Park, so it's mm -hmm. for various businesses. So there's also the, uh, the Greenwood Park Gallery. Is that the correct way I'm saying it? I think it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also uh, several uh, Caribbean restaurants in the area too, so lots to explore besides Sherman Phoenix in the area. So I would say check out our app or website for the Sherman Park neighborhood. I love Greenwood Park. As an artist, I go in there whenever I can, and there's like the most beautiful art you'll ever see. Yes, that's amazing there. Yeah, I didn't grow up in Sherman Park either. Uh, but yeah, in addition to the places Paul listed, uh, another popular spot is the pastry shop, just off uh, on Burleigh, just off Sherman. So, or no, not Sherman, but uh, 35th Street. That's amazing. So in 2016, there was the Zebu police shooting, which resulted in riots and protests. Can you talk about how, how that impacted you? Did that have anything? Because your businesses were either like in, in like, you know, um, in like visualizing and executing the, um, like executing mode, they weren't fully like executed and public forward facing yet. But can you talk a little bit how like, that could have impacted your business and your thinking, and maybe did you pivot your business to fill a hole after the 2016 riots? Did you say 16 or this year? 2016, the previous. Okay. So I can take that. Um, well, my company um, wasn't started until late 2017. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't really start thinking about my company until 2017. However, um, I, again, my mother has had her business and we share the same space right now. Um, and she's been there for 23 years, I believe. And um, it, it was uh, upsetting, um, not so much the riots, but the reason behind the riots. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what's more upsetting is that here we are in 2020, faced with you know very similar situations. 
and far too many um, businesses, uh, I think, are not asking the right questions, which is um, why are we still in this situation instead of, um, you know, right now, I think a lot of businesses or too many are, you know, how is this, you know, affecting my business? Mm -hmm. I think that we sort of reframe our thinking and tune into the community and ask ourselves, you know, what is our business's relationship to the community? How can we impact the community in a positive way? How can we see that this doesn't happen again? And so that black people feel protected um, in the in the neighborhood, I think that you know will um, bode well in the future, and and won't find ourselves in in similar situations. So I think right now it's just for me as a business owner, it's just making sure that I'm doing whatever I can to uh, help that community, help the community of the Sherman Park area, um, so that we're not in the same situation. Thank you. Five years. Yeah, I absolutely agree with everything uh, Nadia said, and just kind of want to uh, add the emphasis on like businesses making connections with the, with the community um, and making sure that you know people in the community feel a sense of connection to, to the businesses that are located to them. I think that what we're seeing in these uprisings are people saying, you know, why are people destroying their own communities? But um, a lot of times, you know, the people in the communities don't own anything in these communities. And so there's a, a connection, there's a disconnect of ownership and influence and control. And that's what every, all of this is about. Like people don't have any control over the police who are supposed to be the people um, who are protecting and serving us. And we have no power to hold them accountable. Um, we don't have any control over what businesses are in our community or you know who, where housing is developed and what kind it is developed so our you know this has been a long standing gap and so MK Black uh, and Jack Constellations kind of arose to fill the needs like we, we we want ownership in the tech sector we want ownership of businesses and restaurants in our communities we want we want yeah we want ownership like and so that's, you're seeing these uprisings because there is no connection and no ownership. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. For me, the, the result of the unrest and riots from in Sherman Park, it led to Sherman Phoenix. And for me, that was one of the starting points when I looked for businesses for the, the app and website. Because I knew what it was. It's, it's all these businesses that are black owned in one central place. And for me, that kind of became synonymous with um, kind of black ownership of a business. So. That was really a starting point for, like I said, the app and for the website. So I think that kind of what spurred me to do this as well, mm -hmm. um, just having that one central spot within that area, uh, a collection of black businesses. Awesome. So you guys are talking about <clears throat> ownership and wanting ownership within the black community, within the neighborhoods too, to give back to the community and how important it is to partner. Where do you see the future of the Sherman Park neighborhood? And maybe if you could talk about some opportunities that you see available. Well, I'm really excited because um, I'm working on a project to redevelop the current space where Jack Con Constellations resides and mm -hmm. um, turn the space into a tech hub or um, a mini entrepreneurship hub where um, people in the community can come and um, experiment and um, engage in a little bit of a makerspace environment and launch their own companies. And to Rick's earlier point, right, begin to uh, start their own businesses and gain a sense of ownership um, in, in their community. So that's exciting for me. <laughs> Congratulations, that's huge. It's a huge undertaking too. It is, I'm stressed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I don't consider, like, I'm not a resident of Sherman Park. Um, and other than, like, attending, you know, businesses, like, I wouldn't consider myself, like, a huge stakeholder. And so for that reason, I, I def always defer to the people who are, you know, on the ground and in and, and the community to create the vision for what they want their community to look like. And so I appreciate uh, Nadia and her, her vision and leadership and the leadership of other folks um, in Sherman Park. And you know, any other way I can help, just let me know. I'll let you know. Paul, do you have anything to add? 
I think the success of Sherman Phoenix has led to the planned openings of new restaurants and businesses such as uh, Nadia's uh, tech space. Uh, I've seen numerous restaurants on the news that are set to open or will open in the next year uh, along Burleigh as well. So I think that's been really great for the area, seeing Sherman's Phoenix and success as it, as it rolls from the ashes of the unrest. So there is, yeah, things are happening there. It mm -hmm. just it takes time to kind of create change and create the ownership, but things are definitely happening in the Sherman Park neighborhood. Yeah. You have to have leaders willing to invest in your neighborhood and then advocate on its behalf, right? And to connect you with the right resources. Nadia, I see you as the leader of the Sherman Park neighborhood. Would you be willing to tell us of the um, other leaders you view um, from the Sherman Park neighborhood? Um, comes to mind is uh, Joanne Sabir. Mm -hmm. um, she has, whether she knows it or not, she's been like a mentor to me <laughs> since I've met her. Um, I am a community investor in the Sherman Phoenix and as Paul said, um, that, that helped me to um, you know, take the first steps to redeveloping my space. Um, so she is definitely one leader that I think stands out. Um, mm -hmm. Another one, I just have to give a shout out because Allstate Insurance has been um, 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 my mother's company for 23 plus years and she's been a leader in the community. Um, we have adjacent houses next to our, uh, our building where children come in and out of our building to talk to my mother, to get the snacks and to learn <laughs> about what it is that she does and to see black people have their own businesses. Now see a black woman in tech and see my mother be there um, for as long as she has. So I, I see her as a leader as well because she's been able to sustain a business there. Um, and you know, it's, it, it's common for uh, businesses like, you know, an insurance company to maybe go uh, more on the outskirts and away from the inner city and so people don't always have the access to stop by and to see their agent and so um having her there i think is um has been a significant um contribution to the sherman park area that's amazing rick and paul do you want to shout out any of the sherman park neighborhood leaders that come to mind for you yeah um, i'll shout out the sherman park community association um they are a long-standing a uh, neighborhood group that's been around for a long time and have done a lot of organizing efforts in the in the neighborhood. Um, a lot of the community organizers have come out of uh, Sherman Park. Um, and so yeah, shout out to the work of the community organization. For me, it's been a deal, honestly, because what you're doing right now is just incredible. I mean, you're taking the next step to expand into this tech hub. I think that's really important, especially that community. So I really applaud what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I agree 100%. The adversity you faced too in this like short time and what you've done is just quite incredible. It's inspirational. Um, there is a question from Barbara. What role does Ascension Joseph, the hospital, need to take in Sherman Park? Park Lawn and other churches. Do you guys have any idea how the hospitals and the churches kind of play a role into the community? Do you think there's opportunity to cross paths more. Well, I'm the gonna, key, I, go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Paul. I'll let you go first. <laughs> I was going to say the key really is outreach. I mean, you have to be out and about making connections, showing the, what you're about. I mean, if you just stay in the, your church or, or your hospital, you're not really doing much for the community. I think this going out and about door to door, you're having these events uh, outside of the church, outside of the hospital, that really is the key to having uh, a more successful neighborhood. Anything else to add? Yeah, so I'm in a unique position to talk about this. Um, I'm gonna get a little political, sorry. Uh, but so the organization that I work for, uh, we actually kind of got involved with, um, I don't wanna call it a fight, but uh, a relations with Ascension St. Joseph's about two years ago uh, because Ascension had announced that they were gonna start cutting services at the hospital. Um, and so a community uh, coalition came together to kind of push back against that and to make sure that Ascension, you know, continue to invest in the hospital that um, what it didn't turn into was um, what other people had seen happen in other communities, um, which was the reduction of services and then eventually the closing of the hospital, um, seeing as that's the only hospital on the far north side of Milwaukee, um, that just would have been disastrous. And so uh, our goal has always been, or not always, but as of most recently been to get uh, Ascension to sign a community benefits agreement, uh, which would basically uh, be a legally binding agreement for them 
them to commit to funding things like um, urgent care facilities in neighborhoods, which if you look at a map of the north side, there's no urgent care facilities except for um, the one at St. Joseph's. Um, you know, funding the social determinants of health, like housing, uh, supporting housing rehab in the neighborhood and things like that. Um, and as an institution with billions of dollars of resources, um, when other hospital institutions are doing similar things to other communities, um, we don't think it's too much to ask. So that's my hope for their relationship with the Sherman Park neighborhood and the general area around St. Joseph's Hospital um, and the official position of the organization I work for. Do you, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I'll just say uh, it's a, to piggyback off of what Paul was saying, outreach is important. And I would say that you know, you should prioritize the community um, and use that as a, use the community as a guiding force in everything that you do. 100%. Um, we'd like to open up the floor if anyone has questions that is a part of the audience right now. I'll give it just a second here and see if anything pops up. All right, I don't see anything, but that is okay. What, can you guys give us one actionable? Like if you were like, hey, Milwaukee community as a whole, this is something you could do that would better myself, my business, my community, our city, what would that be? For us, it's as simple as support black businesses. Mm -hmm. That's simple as that. It's, it's great to uh, stop at small businesses, but try to shop at uh, black businesses, which usually have more hurdles to cross, adversities to cross. So if you can shop there, it helps uh, their business, it helps their employees, it helps the community, it helps Milwaukee. And visit MKE Black to see what black businesses you can support. Yes, mkeblack.org. Well, for me, I would say, um, invest in the Milky Way Tech Hub, I'll be even more specific. <laughs> um, you know, we're doing a lot of heavy lifting and um, help is needed. So there is a role that every business can, can play. Uh, we're looking for partners to help out with STEM education and mm -hmm. building community or um, sponsoring different tech startups. So if you're interested in improving your relationship with the black community or um, uh, building more relationships uh, within the Sherman Park area, please reach out. Awesome. And now also add uh, Donate to MK Black. Um, we're a volunteer operation, so I'm um, always looking to, for funds to expand our capabilities. I uh, want to add new features to the app eventually, um, you know, do more marketing, get the word out some more, so um, help us help you. Awesome. And then can you, um, each of the businesses, oh, I have two questions. Let me start with this one. Okay, so from Barbara, UWM had a design charter for the supermarkets uh, as a food coop co-op is what I'm going to guess. The, uh, in accordance with the Jewish deli as a neighborhood kitchen and theater. Um, and these were all seen as cultural spaces. Do you see future in creating more cultural spaces, such as the ones that's talked about? Absolutely. Um, I actually worked with CDS on uh, a, a proposal for a Harambe food co-op, which would have been a, a black food cultural space. Um, and some of my work as a community organizer, one of the things that uh, we learned and just reiterated is that food brings people together. Um, and so I think that in this day and age, it's, it's often about the experience when you go out and things like that. Um, so designing these cultural spaces around food, um, especially spaces that are wholly owned by the community together, I think it would be a, a grand, a nice, nice way to do things. I agree. Food is how you introduce a culture typically, and that's how we started. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Food is a very central part. Um, for the MKE Black crew, are the restaurants at the Sherman Phoenix currently open? I know some are. I'm not sure about all. Mm -hmm. um, I know sauce and I know sauce and spice is. I know lush popcorn is. Mm -hmm. I know that. Um, oh. I'm sorry. Funky Fresh. Funky um, Fresh is open. Uh, confectionally, yours is closed, I believe, but 
I would check their website or social media to be sure or give them a call. Awesome. And then will you guys share your contact information to like for people to connect with you? What's the best sure. way to get in touch with you? So our website is mkeblack.org. Uh, we can be contacted via email at contact at mkeblack.org. And same for me, jetconstellations.com. There's a contact form you can find on the website or you can reach out to me personally, um, info at jetconstellations.com. All right, we'll close out with one last question from the audience. Um, do you guys know of directories of funding sources for Milwaukee minority businesses during this time? The city, I know that the city does have a few grants. Um, being a business owner, we've had to check into this. There's various grants. Um, Milwaukee downtown is a couple of them. If you Google it, there's a couple of them. Do you guys have any off the top of your head? I feel like I get an email every other day listing one. There was the ethnic business grant, but that closed now. Uh, besides that, I don't know of any uh, just for minorities directly. Okay. Same thing, Nadia. No, I, I, Paul said everything that I was going to say. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to our panelists for um, being vulnerable, dedicating your time and being willing to share your stories with us, business and personal, we appreciate it. And thank you to our audience for joining us today. We hope we found this insightful and definitely check out the businesses we talked about. Also, thank you again to our sponsors. We couldn't put the Cloud Cafe programming together without them. Again, that's Ginger Lazovic from Shore West Realtors, as well as North Shore Bank, Big shout out to those two. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, we do cloud cafe programming every week around all different kinds of topics. So if you want to know what's coming up next, you can sign up for our newsletter at Milwaukee.com. Uh, thank you, Alexa, for hosting this program today. And thank you so much to our panelists, Rick, Paul, and Nadia. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And uh, as I mentioned, go out and support Black businesses, support the movement, do whatever you can. Um, and we hope to see you here again on the Cloud Cafe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.